So this video is going to cover part of chapter 8 of geometry. It's going to go from 8.1 to 8.3. Um, by the end of this video, you should know what transformations and tessellations are and some new conjectures about them. So when you move all the points of a figure according to set rules, you can create a new geometric figure, and that's called an image. Um, so for example, if you move every point two units upwards, or um, you move every point times four of what it was. Um, and then a transformation is if each point of a plane figure can be paired with exactly one point of the original figure, then the correspondence is a transformation. And a rigid transformation, or isometry is also what it's called, is a transformation that preserves size and shape. So if we have a square to begin with, we're going to have the same square and the same size after we're done. So a translation is the simplest type of isometry, and it's a movement in one direction. So if we have this figure, and we want to translate it, then it's simply a move like that. And we can, and a translation vector then is an arrow that shows the distance and direction of a translation. So if we have, if we have a figure and we want to show that it moved that way, that's the translation vector, and then it turns out over here. So this arrow right here is going to be the translation vector because it shows the distance and direction of travel. So then a rotation is another type of isometry, it's a turning motion, and the points in the original figure rotate or turn an identical number of degrees around a fixed center point. So if we have our figure, and then we want to rotate it, it looks like that. And if we want to show the rotation before and after, we can draw a figure, and then we can draw the rotated figure here and our rotation vector. A reflection is another type of isometry and it's the mirror image of a figure. So if I have this figure here and I want to reflect it, it's going to look something like that afterwards. And the line of reflection is also called the mirror line it defines a reflection, and it's the perpendicular bisector of every segment joining a point in the figure with the image of the point. So that sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's basically the line over which the image is reflected. And what they mean by the perpendicular bisector is that if we join all these points like this, then we can see that this line divides them all in half, and is perpendicular to all of them. Um, okay, and then a glide reflection is the combination of a translation and a reflection. So we can have this figure again, and then we reflect it over this line, and then it gets moved over here. That's a glide reflection. So now we have the minimal path conjecture, and it's a little confusing, so bear with me. Um, but essentially, if we have a line, L, and if we have points A and points B on one side of the line, then the minimal path from point A, so from here, to line L, so to somewhere here, then back to point B, is found by reflecting point B, so let's do that right now, so that's over here, and that's with that notation, because it's a reflection, then we draw segment AB, uh, AB with the reflection, which is like that, and then we find the point of intersection with line L, C, 
and then we draw segments A, C, and CB. And that's the minimal path from point A to line L back to point B. So you can think of a composition as a combination of isometries. So it's when one isometry is applied to a figure and then a non another isometry is applied to the figure's image and it's that resulting transformation. So for example, if we have this figure and then we get the mirror image of it and then we decide we want to rotate it then this final figure is the composition. It's the combination of a reflection and a rotation. And then we have the equivalent, which is when a single isometry and the two-step composition produce the same final image. So, for example, if we, to make a composition, um, reflected this, and then reflected it again, that's a two-step composition that can be achieved also by a one-step translation. So this is essentially the same as what I just showed you guys. Um, so if we have our figure, a reflection over a line followed by a reflection of the image, so if we reflect our figure over this line, and then we reflect it over a second line that never intersects the first line, so they're parallel. That's equivalent to a single translation. So that's equivalent to this. And in addition, the distance from any point to its second image under the two reflections is equivalent to the distance between the parallel lines. So what that means is that the distance from here here is the same distance as from here to here, which I think I might have drawn it wrong, but it, they should be the same. So here we have something similar. So a reflection over a line, followed by a reflection of the image over a second line that intersects the first line is equivalent to a single rotation. So that's equivalent to if we were to rotate this image like that. And the measure of the angle of rotation is equal to twice the angle between the pair of intersecting reflection lines. So this or measure of rotation is equal to twice this. So now we're going to talk about symmetry. So these first four terms, reflectional symmetry, line symmetry, bilateral symmetry, and mirror symmetry, all mean the same thing. So what they mean is if a figure can be reflected over a line in such a way that the resulting image coincides with the original, it has these types of symmetry. So if we have, for example, a rectangle, and we have our line of symmetry here, then this side is symmetrical to this side because if we folded it in our heads then they would match up. And the line of symmetry is this reflection line right here. Um, and a figure can have more than one line of symmetry. For example, this figure also has a line of symmetry going this way. So a figure has rotational symmetry if it can be rotated about a point in such a way that its rotated, Im rotated image coincides with the original figure after turning less than 360 degrees. So, for example, if we have a triangle, we can rotate that triangle and it looks the exact same after turning 120 degrees. A figure has point symmetry if it has twofold rotational symmetry after it's rotated 180 degrees and 360 degrees it coincides with the original image so it's basically point symmetric if it has 180 degree rotational symmetry so for example a rectangle 
can be rotated 180 degrees and look exactly the same, uh, but nothing else. It can't be rotated 90 degrees because it'll look different. Um, translational symmetry. Uh, if, a pa uh, if a pattern can be translated a given distance in a given direction in such a way that the image coincides with the original distance of direction given by a translation vector, then it has translational symmetry. Um, so for example, if we had a pattern of squiggly lines like this, then you can see that if we moved it slightly to the right, then it would have the same exact pattern. It would just be moved like that. And then our last term, glide reflection uh, symmetry. If a figure can undergo glide reflection isometry in such a way that the image coincides with the original, it has glide reflectional symmetry. So this is a pretty cool conjecture. Um, it says that a regular polygon of n sides has n rotational symmetries. So the measure of the smallest angle of rotation for rotational symmetry of a regular polygon of n sides is 360 divided by n. So for example, if we start with our equilateral triangle, which is a regular polygon, then it has, so it has three sides, three rotational symmetries, and the measure of the smallest angle of rotation for a rotational symmetry of this equilateral triangle is going to be 360 divided by 3, which is going to be 120 degrees. And we can see that if we rotate this triangle 120 degrees, it's going to look exactly the same because this point is going to be pointing upwards. And we can do this for a square, which is the next regular polygon. It's going to have its first, um, the smallest angle of rotation at 90 degrees. It's going to look exactly the same. This point is going to be here.